<coughs> Over the next few days, we're going to take some time to talk about a few different kinds of forces specifically. Today, we'll be looking at gravitational and normal. Uh, as we do this, we need to keep in mind that uh, Newton's laws are, are still in effect. We'll be using Newton's second law a lot and also Newton's third law. Uh, so don't forget about Newton's laws as we're going through uh, all of these things. Uh, first, we're going to look at gravitational force. Now, gravitational force depends on uh, a few different things. Uh, the way Newton phrased his law of gravitation was that he said that the gravitational force is proportional to the two masses involved and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Uh, now Newton didn't uh, Newton didn't figure out what that proportionality constant was, but we now have it measured pretty accurately. This is capital G. Uh, 6.673 times 10 to the negative 11th Newton meters squared per kilogram squared. Uh, and then sometimes you'll see it with a negative out front to indicate that the force is attractive. Objects, gravitationally objects, always pull uh, other objects toward them. Now, consulting a text, a physics textbook uh, tells me that well, we know G is 6.673 times 10 to the minus 11th. Consulting a physics textbook tells me that the mass of the Earth is 5.97 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. The radius of the Earth is approximately 1740 kilometers. And radius is squared in the formula. And then whatever mass for the thing. So at the surface of the Earth, gravitational force is equal to all these numbers multiplied together. When you multiply 6.673 times 10 to the minus 11th times 5.97 times 10 to the 24th, and then divide by 1740 times 10 to the third squared, that comes out to 9.8. Uh, so near the surface of the Earth, we can say the gravitational force is equal to mg. And for the moment, uh, in this particular part of the course, we're going to be dealing primarily with objects on Earth. Uh, later on, we'll do planetary orbits and things like that, where we will need to use the full uh, law of gravitation. Uh, but for most of our stuff, we'll use mg. Uh, this gravitational force acting on an object um, is called its weight. So here we have the distinction between mass and weight. Uh, in uh, Anywhere in the U.S., they'll tell you how many pounds they are. If you ask how much, how much do you weigh, somebody will say, I'm how, however many pounds. Well, the pound actually is a unit of weight. Uh, here in Korea and in other places, you ask someone, how much do you weigh? They say, I'm however many kilograms. Well, then you should tell them, no, you're, that's not your weight, because they're giving you a value that is a they're giving you their their mass, not their their weight. Uh, since since weight is a force, the unit of weight is again newtons, just like any other uh, any other force. A newton is the SI unit of force. A newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. <coughs> um, as we can see, based on our gravitational force equation, the gravitational force decreases as you move farther from the center of the Earth and increases as you move closer to the center of the Earth. So the gravitational force acting on you right now is less than it would be if you were, you know, out in space somewhere. But it's, uh, but again, you know, that's not why it's space. The zero G is a, is a bad name. There is still gravity. It's not zero. It's just that you're accelerating at the same rate as the box you're in. Um, so I... Accidentally, I should have left space here. I meant to. So if I want to shed a few pounds, should I go to the top of Sarakshan or the beach at Jeju? Well, think about this. Up on top of a mountain, I'm farther from the center of the Earth. So up on top of Sarakshan, I will weigh slightly less. And also I might, you know, lose weight because I'm hiking a mountain. But <laughs> just by changing my location to the top of Sarakshan, I would weigh slightly less than I did on the beach at Jeju. Um, my mass 
is not dependent on my location. My mass is uh, on the top of Saroxon or on the beach at Jeju or on the moon or wherever. My mass is going to be the same. Um, but weight will change based on your location. Um, so here's an example where we can apply this little definition of, of weight. A tennis ball with mass 58 grams falling downward toward the Earth. Air resistance is present. The ball accelerates downward at 9.1 meters per second squared. Since there's air resistance, we're accelerating at a little bit less than, than gravitational acceleration. Uh, what is the magnitude of air resistance acting on the ball? Well, as always, we want to draw a diagram. Here's my tennis ball. Think about what forces are acting on the tennis ball. Well, there's always gravitational force. So we have gravitational force. Call that F sub G or MG. Uh, I'd like you to note on the AP uh, test, when you draw force diagrams, you can call it FG, you can call it MG. The one thing you cannot call it is G, because G is an acceleration. And if you label it with G, you will not get the point for that, because G is an acceleration, not a, a force. Uh, and then we have air resistance acting upward on the ball. So you can call it whatever you want. I'll call it FG for drag force. So we've got drag force and gravitational force acting on the ball. Okay, once I have my diagram, now I can write Newton's second law in the horizontal direction. There's nothing happening. Have zero forces, zero acceleration. Hooray. In the vertical direction, you can say some of the forces in the y direction is equal to mass times acceleration in the y direction. I'm going to call up positive as per usual, so my drag force minus mg is equal to mass times acceleration in the y direction. Drag force is what we're trying to find out. And then we can plug in, well, rearrange it slightly. We move this over to the other side. There you get that. Uh, we can factor it. Or not, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and then once we do that, we can plug in numbers. The mass is 0.058. The acceleration, well, g is 9.8. The acceleration downward at 9.1 meters per second squared. So that's downward acceleration. So you plug in negative 9.1 and then solve. Now notice we did, we did say g was a negative here. Uh, G itself is a positive value. We we called that a negative force because it was downward, but then when we moved it to the other side of the equation, it became positive. So we plugged in a, a positive 9.8, and then we can just type that into our calculator to find that the drag force acting on the tennis ball is pretty small, 0 0.0406 newtons. All right. Now I have mentioned before that air resistance is dependent on velocity. So this would have to be, uh, I should have specified, this is the instantaneous magnitude of air resistance. If it's accelerating, it'll get faster and air resistance will actually increase. Uh, we'll do something with that a little bit later on uh, in, the, in the chapter. Um, one further point that I want to make about gravitational force, uh, is that you might note these masses here, mass one, mass two, well, Mass 1 times mass 2 is the same thing as mass 2 times mass 1, uh, which is just showing Newton's third law here, that if I find the gravitational force that the Earth exerts on me, that's going to be equal to my mass times little g, pretty much, at the surface of the Earth. Uh, that is also the magnitude of gravitational force I exert on the Earth. Uh, now, it has a more obvious effect on me because of Newton's second law. The, the Earth is much more massive than I am, and so the given gravitational force acting on the Earth does very little in terms of accelerating the Earth because the Earth's mass is really darn big and something times 10 to the 24th, while my mass is 80 some kilograms. Uh, so there's a much bigger effect that the Earth has on me than I have on the Earth. By the same token, the Earth's mass is times 10 to the 24th, uh, while a person's mass is in times 10 to the first, so a uh, factor of 10 to the 23rd is how much more massive the Earth is than a person, more or less, which is why we don't feel gravitational forces pulling us toward people, 
uh, because the gravitational force the Earth exerts on us is just way, way bigger, even though we're closer to the person than we are to the center of the Earth. The gravitational force acting on you because of me when I'm standing in the front of the classroom is so small compared to the gravitational force the Earth exerts on either of us. And this law of gravitation applies to any two objects in the universe. So if anyone ever says that you're unattractive, you can say, you're wrong, because Sir Isaac Newton told me that I am attractive. Uh, unfortunately, you would, would have to follow up by explaining that your attractiveness is negligible.